uh, your head teacher from Wisdom Center. And uh, yes, remember I still handle science as uh, last time we met and we are here at the same time. Yes, so I'm again back to take you through uh, the same activities uh, we picked from where we ended last time. So this time specifically uh, we want to look at uh, the reasons or importance why we keep cattle. Okay, a cat and goat, because at least we looked at different parts and now I want to go to the last part why we keep cattle because uh, it's very important to look at that. Let us uh, move uh, to that this time. Okay, uh, so the importance of keeping uh, goats and cattle. Yes, it's a, uh, majorly we have cattle and goats in our areas, oh, people prayer them. So we want to look at why specifically do we need to go for this? Uh, so uh, when you look at, we want to look at uh, the importance of keeping cattle and goats, uh, we can actually classify them uh, in two uh, different uh, uh, ways. We look at uh, uh, benefits like uh, nutritional benefits, we look at uh, economic benefits, and our cattle benefits. Simply, we want to look at uh, the importance of keeping cattle in three parts. Okay? So the first part we look at uh, nutritional benefits. So why do we keep cattle or rare cattle and goats? Looking at uh, nutrition, simply we defined nutrition last time, okay? Uh, can you simply refer to the whole feeding. So one, two, why do we, in terms of feeding, how, how would this be important, keeping current goats? Yes, uh, all the time, all the part of that, our diet. So what should we uh, go for it? So in this case, we can say, we keep cattle simply because the source of meat, okay? Immediately, uh, we, be, we base on this, we in, wide, widely find that uh, many families, okay, to, in every meal you find you having meat or different meals because it's very important. And remember, meat is a source of proteins and the in the proteins for growth. So when you ask nutritional benefit, okay, we check on uh, this point, source of meat. So people will keep uh, rare animals, mainly for beef products, okay. This is very important. And then uh, the next nutritional benefit, which we can look at, uh, is that uh, it's a source of milk, okay? Yes, uh, we need milk in different uh, ways. You find that uh, uh, milk is very important, okay? Uh, it contains fats, proteins, vitamins, and carbohydrates. Majorly, you find that milk is uh, like a bath diet. So missing milk for a long time is not all that good. So. People can uh, keep goats and cattle for, uh, let's say, to provide okay, themselves with milk. So this is very important. When you ask that, uh, write down uh, what are the nutritional benefits of, of keeping goats and cattle. We're looking in terms of feeding okay, our diet. You want uh, to improve your diet. So you should keep animals, rare cattle and goats for meat and milk production. Yes, so this can put us the second uh, group of benefits. So we look at uh, eco economic benefits. We look at economic benefits simply to understand it. I take it in terms of money. Okay? Yes, so oh, income. So when you check on this, the first benefit can say, yes, hides or skins provide leather, which is used to make bags, wallets, belts, shoes, jackets, yes, and sofa sets. So these can be sold and we get money. So in terms of economic benefits, we can say, yes, goats and cattle provides us height and skins, as simple as that. And then uh, still uh, looking at economic benefits, we can look at uh, employment. So uh, keeping goats and cattle provides employment for us people. Yes, give example to the farmer. Yes, it's an employment. You need people around in your community. So you can employ people to be the herdsmen. Oh, yes, they are providing feeds to animals. Yes, they are. that's the employment to them. Uh, the ones who care for them, like treat them, the vets or the veterinary officer who need a job. So that is employment. So you're keeping cattle and goats on your farm. You can employ many people uh, in your areas. 
which is very important. And then uh, once they're employed, that's a source of income. So we can give the good next point, economic importance or benefit as a source of income. Or one can source of money. Where you can sell meat, milk and sell meat and get money, which, is, which can be used for different purposes, so buying uh, different basic needs at home. Yes, so it can actually be for even commercial farming, whereby you can uh, sell milk, okay? Export even to different countries, which is source of income. And then uh, we can check on a diary here, this diagram here. Check on picture here. You can see this is a dairy farm. Yes, so uh, here cattle are right here. And you see you have a milk product here. We can easily sell milk, okay? So you can get milk from a dairy farm, okay? selling to different people different companies okay you can get different products like yogurt talk of cheese talk of blue band yes so uh, there are very many milk products we can get from here and all these can be sold okay and get money which source of income so in talk of uh, uh, milk as a product this is very important and again for milk we can get other product, products we can call milk products like cheese butter yogurt okay uh, these are very good cow ghee so when they are sold we can get money so, yeah so uh, it's very important to keep cows or goats for economic benefits then we can also uh, have cattle okay and goats on our farms for social benefits Social benefit simply means the way of living with people. So, yeah, we live in many ways with people around us in our communities, okay? Yes, for, for example, we find that uh, uh, in terms of paying dowry, people can easily, yes, use cattle, use goats, okay? Um, in terms of uh, living with a neighbor, one can, uh, yes, okay, yeah, give, give uh, your neighbor a cow to rear. So that way people can easily it can improve the, the well-being of people social economic okay living together with people because you're exchanging okay yes it's very important and uh, we can check on this picture here look at uh the oral ceremony here okay in case of marriages you can find a uh, uh, the family of the blessed family of the, the boy might give in a cow. Yes, like here. It's a fresian. So and uh, it is it's a token of the of the thanks to the family of the girl. Uh, and vice versa also might also be done to the side of the boy, but majorly like to the side of the boy is given to the to the girls. Okay? And uh, also when you're in the communities living down also you can find uh, living together with the friends, with the family friends or people in the people uh, in the field in the, in the community you want to be talking over thanks to somebody who has done good to you you can give a cow and it's uh, in, 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 in Rwanda it's a cow so when someone does good yes can say muhainga this is very important and it keeps community uh, with strong ties so that is for social benefits you can say uh, let's say uh, cattle and goats are used in social functions such as doll giving away Okay, on cultural sermons, we can talk of strengthening ties with the, with the, with the society members. You can give out a cow. That's very important. Uh, cows can be given token as a token of thanks to, to somebody who has done good to you. That's also a social benefit. So you can see it's very important to keep cattle. So simply, uh, we are saying that uh, we can keep God's and cattle on our farm okay majorly for uh you like can say for social benefits for economic benefits okay uh for our cultural benefits okay you can check on that as we can move okay this part here yeah so part d we can keep goats and cows for our cultural benefit here simply uh, we know meaning of our culture we say that uh can be simply the art or science of raising animals and growing of crops. So if somebody uh, grows crops, it's very important to keep cows, whereby you won't go on buying manure, you just get from your farm. 
So here I can say, provide the manure to, the, to be used in farmers to grow crops. This manure will improve on soil fertility. So this is very important. Uh, good farmers, uh, they have to combine the two, growing crops and rearing animals. That you, could do, you don't go on buying uh, manure. Yes, some can go on buying uh, this, uh, uh, the artificial manure, okay, or chemical, chemical fertilizers, but uh, it's very important to also use uh, these natural manures, okay? They are very good to improve our soil fertility. Yes, so uh, this brings us to the end of our unity. Yes, yes, so uh, we've been carrying all along right, from uh, beginning looking at uh, uh, keeping goats and animals, okay? We classify them in different ways, looking at uh, goats kept for diet purposes, kept for meat production, those which are kept for uh, both meat and milk purposes. Yes, so this time we come to the end of the unit and we have to go through uh, a number of questions, please, to help us uh, uh, in terms of revision. So we can uh, check on unit test here and check ourselves from all along. We've been looking at this. Uh, let us go through together. Okay? Yes, uh, so this question is here, most of them. Yes, uh, we've been handling them in the notes, in the, in the, in the, sorry, in the activities. And uh, you are supposed to have free time and look at them. Okay? Yes, so number one, you asked, assume uh, you want to start a project of keeping goats or cows at home. Describe how we would construct the cow shed or the goat shelter. Yes, we discussed uh, from the beginning that a, goat shed, a, a cow shed uh, is a house for cows and then a goat shelter, the house for goats. Okay? Yes, so look at this, okay? Uh, yourself right somewhere and look at uh, uh, what we should consider, okay? Okay, uh, what uh, would be, what would you use? What you are saying? When, if you want to start a project of keeping goats and cows, this group, how would you construct the cow shed or the goat shelter? Basically, uh, look at the qualities of a good goat shelter, a cow shelter, a cow shed, and this will help you to move ahead. So please write down the qualities of a good goat shelter or a cow shed. Still, check on number two. You asked what subbreed? Yes, yeah. You can check on this right down. Uh, simply explaining a breed, a brief definition of a breed. And then when you check on number two, you are asked to distinguish between indigenous breeds and exotic breeds of animals. Yes, remember we discussed this. We said that uh, indigenous breeds have, we have different terms. We can refer to native breeds or local breeds. Okay? And then the exotic here can be referred to uh, Imported breeds, okay, they are the exotic breeds or foreign breeds. So from this you can easily define this. So distinguish this, give a difference between the two, okay. Uh, we have more activities for you here. Check uh, which, just give two reasons why animal houses should be fenced. It's very important, check on this. And then uh, next number here you have to look at, uh, you asked, a kind of size, a primary six pupil, Every time they go for field visit to observe animals, she complains of bad smell. Okay, major like on a, on a farm, cut a farm. And then uh, one day she say that she cannot become a farmer. In fact, she added that farming is meant for boys alone. Oh my God! What advice can you give to Akaliza? Okay, is a uh, so from this silver view, yes, check. What would you advise her? Because she thinks that uh, uh, in farming is not all that good. There's bad smell in the farm. And she says that uh, it's, this should be maybe, yeah, uh, be for the boys only. Okay? Uh, it's, so what's, what, what would you advise, Kaiser? Yeah, okay? So also you give and check on that. You have more questions here. Number five, yes, check on this. Uh, which characteristics would you look for when selecting a cow for beef production, nay for milk production? Check this. Yes, we have gone through this, those of us together, so please, you can check, use internet, okay, 
uh, Google search, which is a search in common search engine. Yes, uh, also you can try to think about this and then write down the features or characteristics you would consider when selecting a good cow for beef production, I mean production. Then here, next number here, you're given uh, a table here, yes, just to, to complete. So here you're given here, you are given here, uh, you can say in this table here, disease, here animal affected, cause, symptoms, and symptoms, prevention and control. Yeah, we looked at diseases, okay, that affect cattle and goats. We also saw the cause, so the signs and symptoms and prevention or control. So check when you're given an animal like a like goat and cattle, and compare the signs this way. Like here they ask here, they're given a sign here, uh, blood oozes from body openings. What does this mean? This uh, uh, blood comes out actually through a, or through the body openings. If it's the mouth, okay, if it's the nose, and all other parts opens on the body. So this is the, in the case. Okay, let's do this together for the first part. For this, you can say, in the case of this, you see an animal having blood oozing, okay, or blood coming out of different body parts, like uh, the nose, okay, the mouth, and other parts. Yes, this is simply this will be anthrax, okay? Yes, it will be anthrax. And anthrax simply it is caused, okay, by bacteria. So this is remember we said what this is caused, uh, they are caused by bacteria and can be spread through. Uh, contamination of food or feed, feeds, water. So this can be an infectious disease. So when they ask us the control, if a disease is infectious, then the control becomes easy. Talk of the uh, quarantining your animals. So quarantine your animal or isolate your animals. Okay? And then vaccination. So this is very important to check on this. When you're given the animal, Yes, compare with the signs given here, and then you can easily get a disease. When you're given animal and the cause and a disease and the cause, then check which animals are affected and get the signs. Yes, so for the next part, you can do this yourself. Okay, you're given a disease as hot water. We looked at this. Yes, check which animals. Okay, write two of them. Which two, two groups of animals that can be affected by hot water, and then you're given the cause as a protozoa. Okay, yes, what are the signs, okay, of hot water, okay, and then you're given control of ticks, the preven prevention, given to you, yes, so you can fill the two here, so then still you can fill number three here, table here, that you're not given, the disease, the animal is not given, but you're given the cause, okay, and signs, so the cause here is bacteria, I did the signs here, swollen udder and teats. Okay? Yes. When you're given, remember, swollen udder and teats, when you're given such, then you can either check on the, on, on the, on the, on the disease. Okay? Yes. Uh, if you are to look at this, okay? Yeah, it just answer together with the disease and then uh, you can answer uh, the, the, the text. Okay, you can... Talk of mastitis also can go with this, swollen so other and teats, okay? Uh, tuberculosis also, and more have tuberculosis. And uh, having, uh, uh, oh, it's having tuberculosis, having mastitis, the other will be swollen, the teats can be swollen. You can see wounds appearing on the teats. But majorly for this case, it can be tuberculosis. But once you go, when you go on giving you signs like a, a blood stained milk, you see stains of blood in milk, uh, wounds appearing on the teats, painful teats, that is strictly mastitis, okay? Yes, so uh, for this case we can answer us back at uh, tuberculosis for so any other, uh, but though it can also go to, the, to mastitis, two of them can apply, but once they give you signs like uh, 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 blood stained milk, swollen teats, and painful teats, that is now mastitis. But for this case, yes, or in other, we can take tuberculosis as the best answer for this case. Then you can also, uh, since you have answered this disease here, you can now get which animal which can be affected by 
by tuberculosis. You can write them here and then complete the prevention and control. Yes, you are also uh, given here, you're given a disease, that's the uh, uh, brucellosis. This is also common uh, in, in, in cattle. Okay? So, you're given, yes, the animals, cattle, and goats. Uh, so then you are given here a cause. Yes, you're asked to answer cause, the symptoms and signs. So you can do this. You're given the prevention. So uh, this will be good. So you use the time and answer or this table, complete this table. Uh, then, next number, okay? Number seven, we are asked, what's the importance of proper sanitation in farm and in animal farms? Yes, so look at farm animals, goats, cattle, yes, and so look at keeping sanitation, okay? Cleanliness on, on the farm. Yes, so why should we keep sanitation of, of the farm? Why should we keep it clean? So write down this. Then still number eight, you're given to identify the breeds of cattle below. Yes, we asked which are dairy cattle and uh, which are beef cattle. Yes, so we looked at dairy cattle and beef cattle. So check uh, here, could this be beef or cattle? Uh, could it be beef cattle or dairy cattle? Check this, is it beef or dairy cattle? And also, uh, last one. I remember we said when you're checking on that to know if it's beef cattle, check on the others, okay? Those of big others, size, size of the other can show you, okay? Then, uh, and also the, remember I talked of the shapes. Triangular shapes, simply they are for dairy production. So check, check on the shape of an animal, check on the shape of this animal, check on the shape of this animal. Is it triangular or rectangular? If it's triangular, then it will be specifically a dairy cattle. Then, uh, if it's rectangular, that will be beef cattle to put on a more meat. So, you can check on those uh, features and then answer either beef cattle or dairy cattle. So, that's a good guide for you. And then, uh, next number here given, we asked, uh, number nine, why do you think it is an advantage to grow crops, okay, when you have a cattle or goat farm? Yeah, so still check on this. Uh, you give any more questions here? Yes, why is the government of Rwanda emphasizing, okay, that uh, there should be at least a cow per family in Rwanda, which we can call it in Rwanda, Jiringam uh, Rwanda. This is very important that the government thought of. Yes, so why should there uh, be at least a cow per family? Please write down this. And then uh, the next number here, Number 11, yes. Why do you think people are advised not to drink milk that is not boiled? Yes, we talked of this, not good to drink and boiled milk. So please, not down. Okay, yes. So maybe number 12, let us, do it. Let us check on this. Okay. Uh, you are given here to answer. Okay, answer this. You're given. Write through of house for each statement. You're given Aisha. Halston and the Brown Swiss are all dairy cattle breeds. Yes, so we have looked at this. We looked at the Asia, the Halston, uh, Brown Swiss. Are they all dairy cattle breeds or not? So you can, if, if it's true, if the statement is true, you say, if the statement is correct, you say true. If the statement is wrong, then write false. Okay? Not this in your books. And uh, then number two, we asked the most important products of cattle, okay? Uh, trout powder and milk, okay? Not meat, meaning they are telling us it's, what's very important is only the, uh, okay, let's maybe powder milk, okay? Or just milk from, from the cattle, not meat. Is it true? Oh, it's both. So please check if it's, the statement is true that uh, the most important product is just milk from the cattle, you can say true. If it's wrong statement, then you can say false. If we need both of them, if we both are very important. Okay, then take part C here. Taking goat milk by human beings is not healthy. So check this. Yeah, remember we rear goats, we can rear goats and cows for milk production, but the human is saying, is it how to take goat milk? 
bohemian beings if not healthy or it's healthy so please answer by true or false next we are asked when animals die of disease they are supposed to be slaughtered immediately and eaten so is this correct or wrong should we eat animals should we eat meat of animals that are have been sick so should you if an animal let's say die if, if it dies of anthrax should we bury it bury it or burn it it's flesh or we should eat that flesh so if it's true okay then write true if it's correct write true if it's wrong write false yes uh, still you have more questions here okay number 13 give a reason why the government of Rwanda is encouraging Rwanda to practice Jiringa Munya Rwanda okay okay you can check on that and then uh, answer that properly so we check next number here how can the government control the spread of food and mouth disease in the cattle keeping yeah check on that then next number 15 we are asked to draw the digestive system of a cow okay and name the parts uh, when you go to the next number yes number 16 we asked name for the four stomachs of a cow from the digestive system okay and then now uh, we ask to refine the following terms yeah look at this uh, okay uh, maybe yes for this case you're going to have questions that you're going to do alone but uh, we can do some questions together and then the rest will do them okay yeah so those questions up to number 14 okay do them alone okay have the time go through these questions but uh, for this case let us do it together from number 15 at least to number 18 these are four numbers let us do them together so number one we asked yes uh, to do the digestive system of a car let us look at it uh, uh, this way together yes yes so uh, simply here we are given from number 15 we asked the diagram below shows the digestive system of a car so we are asked to use it to answer questions that follow. Yes, so uh, look at this diagram properly here, strictly. Uh, okay. So, yes, so this diagram here. So, going using our the idea or the work from primary four, we learned about this in primary four, the digestive system of Bacao. Yes, you might have gone through this. So, look at it, let us look at, uh, yes part looking at part a here uh, okay so part a yes but to understand this before going to part a we need to look at uh, how uh, digestion takes place here moves there okay uh, the movement of food within these stomachs here because they, they are four stomachs within a, a cow because a cow is a ruminant animal okay it can chew cow so before we answer this part let's check so here we said once uh, a cow, let's say graze, grazing, or it's grazing, okay, uh, its feet will be kept in this part all around here, okay, this, okay, this is the rumen. So here part B and all this, all this round part, that's called the rumen. The rumen is part majorly its function, it stores or keeps, okay and these materials for for some time for short time okay then uh, when uh, it this it comes to evening okay it will bring back okay uh, these these and the just materials back to the mouth okay for further chewing so once they are chewed then they are sent through the esophagus or the gullet and then from uh, okay from the rumen okay it will be sent down you put an arrow here to be sent down to this part here okay this part here sorry sorry to be sent to this part here from here to be sent this part here yeah this part down here is simply called uh, reticulum so from rumen it will be sent to reticulum okay looking at this arrow that's his arrows yes uh, and then here also shall have more digestion here, the reticulum. Then from here it will move, okay? Okay? 
uh, to the part here. Okay. Uh, that part, okay, uh, which is uh, the omasam, okay. So we can now see how we are going to answer A. We say that uh, uh, from, from the reticula, from Roman, feeds will be moved, okay, will be sent down this part here called reticulum and then from here to be sent to from reticulum to be sent to omasa and then there it will be sent again move to the apomasa okay lastly this is, and then this will be the last stomach part of the stomach and then to be sent to the uh, the small intestine and then where digestion takes end so simply this can give us a, a clear ground to answer our Question. So, from what we've discussed, we can say that part A will be the omasum. Okay? Okay? Omasum. Okay. Then uh, uh, that can push us to part B. Yes. Part B, we say that from, uh, from Roman here, food goes the second part, which will be reticulum. So, part B will be reticulum. Reticulum. Okay. Uh, then from the reticulum, okay, food now will move of these feet, okay, will be sent, okay, to the, uh, yeah, you say from the central of Masam, and then from Masam it is sent, moved to the third part, uh, moved here to this part here, uh, which will be the first stomach, okay, okay, which is Abomasam. Uh, so we can go to this properly and answer part C. So where is from B? How part C? Yes, part C. Uh, this is the uh, abomasum. Okay. Or oh, abomasum. Okay. Abomasum. Yes. Good. Uh, so. Uh, Simply we can see, okay, we look and look at this as the four stomachs, okay, we have part A, I uh, have A, have B, C, D. So part D here, okay, this D we are pointing here, but at small they can point here. So this is all the same, it's the run, okay, all this, this is now the, uh, the room here, okay, these are just seen, but uh, this all we have put a point here, a point here, this is the lumen. Where where and the history materials are first sent or stored for a short time. So our part D will be the lumen. Okay. Lumen. Okay. Yeah, so when this when you ask the first two marks, okay, overcome, these are simply we have uh we have uh omasam. Uh, reticulum, abomasum, and lumen. Then their order, the way food moves, that uh, food will first move from the uh, from uh, uh, the gullet uh, or esophagus, it will enter, go to the lumen. This part here, all this. Okay? Then from the lumen, it will be sent, the second part called the reticulum. Okay? Where it will be sent to the uh, omasum, and then lastly to abomasum. So these four stomachs are majorly used for digestion. As you, the importance you can say is where uh, feeds are, or food is digested in account for more digestion. And then digestion will take end in the, uh, uh, in the small intestine. So we are asked to part E here. Just like other animals, digestion, digestion takes end in the small intestine. And then here, uh, uh, food nutrients will be absorbed. Okay, so they can ask you which important process takes place in part A. So it is absorption of food. Okay, and then uh, in the large intestine, it's this where absorption of water takes place. Water is removed from uh, from what remains here. Okay, this so waste, waste can be and the just material can be sent here to the large intestine with the water. So once water is removed from those and the just material, what remains will be now the Waste in in, car, in animals, the cows you can call dung, animal dung, which will be sent, okay, out uh, through parts G, which I will look at. Yes. Uh, so moving, we can say parts 
Let's check. Yes. So for this, yes, we can have, we can answer this from what we've discussed. So commonly, yes, you can do this yourself. Okay, it's important you can copy this. Yes, we have answered the first two marks. Look at this. Which parts are commonly, yes, where digestion takes end, where food is absorbed. That is the part E, you can answer this. Then in part F, okay, where water is absorbed, which is called absorption of water. So takes place in the part F. Okay, so you can also answer part F. Okay, and then yeah, let us also put G here. Part G. Okay, so this is where wastes are sent out of the body. So to animals, which will be this part? Please answer this also. Okay, the part where uh, the wastes like cow dung, the dung is sent out of the body. Yes, yes. So the other part which the acid for us already we answered for you like the mouth here. Okay, and then uh, this is the heart, okay, the lungs. So these have been answered for you. So you can complete what's remaining. Uh, so uh, from there, okay, we can be asked, yes, the next number says, uh, uh, name the parts or name the four stomachs of a cow. Yes, so this will be number 16. That's number 16, okay. To ask the name of the four, the four stomachs of a cow. Okay, uh, simply these four stomachs, okay, we look at them, uh, yes, from this question here. We can get them from here, but we can answer them in the order how of, of, of the occurrence of digestion, digestion in, a cow, in cows, yeah. So majorly, uh, the first will be uh, rumen, okay, good, yes. So when, uh, the, when, 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 when undigested materials are sent, okay, uh, from, let's say, from the mouth through, the path will be passed through the, uh, the gullet, okay, and then up to where? Up to this rumen, this part rumen here. And then from rumen, the second part we said that food from here moves to the part called the reticulum. So the second here will be, let me write it here, will be reticulum. Reticulum. Okay. Reticulum. And then uh, uh, the third one from reticulum here, food will move, okay? to uh to omasam sorry to omasam uh, and then lastly we'll move to from omasam will come down and go to abomasam the last part of the stomach of the cows abomasam yeah so these are the four stomachs of a cow and uh, simply, uh, when this takes us to animals that are, are referred to ruminant animals, so they can ask you, what are ruminant animals? Simply ruminant animals, okay, uh, we can say that they are animals that choke hard, okay? These animals, their digestive systems, they have got four stomachs, okay? It's a, it's a four-chambered st chambered stomach. Yes. Uh, now this, we can now move to number... 17. So here we are asked to define terms like a uh, ruminant animals. Okay. Define ruminant. Uh, term ruminant animals. Okay. This was A. And then B. We are asked to define uh, non ruminant animals. Non ruminant animals okay yes so uh, we talk we simply say that uh, for ruminant animals okay the animals that choke hard simply they choke hard okay meaning that uh, when they are grazing times comes maybe like it comes the evening they rest and then they begin to bring back okay the feeds which were not digested so once they are grazing uh, the, the, just, the, the undigested materials will be sent through the, 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 from the mouth to the, through the esophagus and then sent to the rumen for storage. It's like a pouch for keeping 
and there's the materials. And then when they're resting, and even you see them finding chewing. Think of the ca ca kind of like goats, okay, cows, yes, uh, the buffalo. You find that they go on, okay? They will be chew. They will bring back. If you find them living, they will be. They will bring back feeds and be chewing. So that is called the chewing cut. So we can simply refine ruminant animals as animals that chew cut. Okay. Or we can say these are four chambered stomachs, animals with four stomachs, which are the rumen, reticulum, umasum, and the bumasum. And then when you come to non-ruminant animals, we can simply look at animals. Okay, that do not chew cut. So for these ones, they have only one, that they have a single chambered stomach. So only, not men, not having like a parts, like a division, like a, the cows, the ruminant animals. So to understand this simply, okay, talk of uh, primates, the human beings, the gorillas, the chimpanzee, uh, uh, yes, and other examples you can okay, keep looking at. So those ones, they do not chew cut, okay? They have only a single stomach. Yes, so we can move ahead. And uh, check, still through. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, yes, we have simply looked at the digestive system of a, of a cow. Okay, this is good. Yeah, we have also seen the four stomachs of a cow. And we see that this can be uh, following their order. You can have the rumen, uh, it's the rumen, the second is the reticulum. Masam, and then the fourth part of the stomach will be the abomasum. So these are the four stomachs of a cow. So this, then we say that these animals have got four stomachs are referred to as ruminant animals. This is why we can simply answer number 17. If as asked to define the terms, ruminant animals, we can say ruminant animals are animals that choke hard. Okay? Somebody can still say that they are animals that they have four stomachs all there are four chambered stomachs okay yes uh, and then we went on looking at examples okay of animals that are called ruminant animals and we have had talk of cattle like a goat like a like a cows okay the bullocks calves so those ones okay so you can say simply say cows okay talk of sheep uh, goats, the buffalo, deer, elk, a giraffe, okay, uh, the camels. So these ones are examples of ruminant animals. Simply, we say that they are examples can be uh, cows, sheep, goats, the buffalo, uh, the buffalo. Talk of the deer, elk. Uh, giraffe and the camels so those are examples of uh, ruminant animals simply they have four chambered stomachs okay good so this can now take us to uh, non-ruminant animals which we defined as animals that do not chew cut okay yes to bring back and just the material is what we are, call, we are calling chewing cut they will bring back the un Yes, the materials for further digestion. Okay, they bring them back into the mouth and then they'll be chewing, the cow will chew. Okay, yeah, this is what we stopped of here. We say that uh, animals are ruminant, okay? Yes, so when they are grazing, okay, they get the feet to the mouth and then they are stored in the rumen here. Okay, so uh, when it comes time for resting, okay, they will bring you back this with this much which are not digested, back into the mouth here and chew them for further digestion. So as they are chewed, broken down, so they are again sent back, okay? From the rumen here, to go to the reticulum, from the reticulum, sent through the omasan, and then from there back, this way move to the abomasan. And then this complete digestion, uh, part, this is the part of the digestion, the stomach, going through the four stomachs, and then will be sent to the as, uh, small intestine for further digestion, what well, the will take air, and from here will be sent to the uh, uh, fluids will be absorbed by the body and then leave wastes, okay, containing water. Once water is removed, and then remain the uh, to the droppings, the cow dung, which are sent through the uh, through the body from the body through part G. Yes, 
So this can uh, push us to the part of ruminant and animal animals that we are looking at. So I say for those ruminant animals have got four stomachs, but non ruminant have only a single stomach. So we can simply say non ruminant animals are animals that do not choke up or they are animals that have one stomach. For ruminant animals like cow, they have got four stomachs and they choke up. So you can be asked, why is a cow called a ruminant animal? We can say because it chews cow. Or one can say because it has got four stomachs. So moving to the other side, non ruminant animals, we have said that for non ruminant animals, uh, they do not chew cud. So this is a very clear uh, point, okay, clear point that uh, we can simply say that they don't chew cud, so they have one stomach. So example, we can be asked examples of animals that do not chew cud. Simply begin with the, with the primates. Mention any primate. We say that primates are animals that have got a well-developed brain. So these can be humans, okay? And then uh, talk of gorillas, the chimpanzee, okay? Uh, baboons, or oh, those ones are primates. So those ones are the examples of non-ruminant animals. We can go on mentioning other animals which are not primates. Talk of uh, dogs, cats, horses, they also do not chew cud. Okay? Then when you bring animals like a bird, mention any, they also don't chew cud. Yes. So uh, this is a very clear part. And then uh, we can go to num now we can move to next number. That's number 18. 18A we asked to, this, to give a difference between ruminant animals and the monogastrics. Okay? So, yes, the term monogastrix, okay, the, this one simply is another term uh, for non ruminant animals because mono means one. So, when we talk of monogastrix, we mean animals that have got a single stomach. So, simply we can say ruminant animals, okay, the animals that do not choke hard, while monogastrix are animals that choke hard, okay, yes. Uh, or can say, say, ruminant animals that have got four stomach, chambered stomachs, and then monogastrics are animals that have one chambered stomach. Okay, and then uh, this gives the part, part B, okay, to give examples in each. Yes, please write down, yes, in your book, write examples of ruminant animals, and then uh, examples of monogastrics. Yes. So uh, this brings us to the end of our lesson today. Yes, so uh, we have probably looked at uh, different parts, okay? Come to the end of uh, this uh, unit of animals, okay? So, uh, and then now uh, we've ended with a couple of questions, please. Uh, so have time, go through. We have tried some together and a uh, number of them are left for you, okay? So please always check through, get your book, do your work. Uh, when you find uh, challenges, you can use, you learn about ICT, the search engines, like Google search, you can search for answers. Uh, get, you try to think about more answers and then uh, you can uh, make sure that you go through all. Uh, and then you can also meet us, you can have more questions for revision uh, on uh, YouTube channels, okay? Uh, always watch BTN TV uh, and then uh, check on our website, Wisdom Center website, uh, WhatsApp groups of the school. If you meet us, you can, you can have access, you can check on us, you get more questions. Yes, so this brings the end of the lesson, but remember uh, in this time, always keep safe keep keep your life safe keep uh, your neighbors also safe it's very important to keep yourself and the neighbors so do this uh, by sanitizing your hands okay to avoid infections because you may touch any surface so you sanitize your hands okay don't touch any time don't avoid touching your past like the nose the eyes the mouth because can use this can easily spread because you touch this any surface and infect you cause the spread of infections okay into your body uh yes if you have no sanitizers then get water with soap wash your hands properly okay this will be very good wash your hands properly and then what is very important avoid uh, movements keep social distance keep at home 
we are there for you you'll get lessons every time check on us thank you we take that